So let's do this. Let me erase all this. You guys right here. Here's your transversal of parallel lines. If I tell you, let's write this in. Angle 1 is 120 degrees. I'm going to tell you that. Angle 1 is 120 degrees. I want you to fill in every angle you can. Angle 2, angle 3, angle 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Go. Fill them all in. Okay, what did you guys get? What's angle 2? What's 2? Why is it 60? Because 1 and 2 are a linear pair, right here. Linear pair. 1 and 2. They're on a straight line. They add to 180. What is 3? 3 is 120, Juliana, for two reasons. It's either vertical pair to number 1, or it's a linear pair to number 2. You see how 2 and 3 are on a straight line? That's 180. Or you could say, well, I know that 1 and 3 are vertical angles, so they're equal. What's 4? 60. Now, how can I jump down to 5, 6, 7, and 8? Because of parallel lines. They are going at the same slope. They are going at the exact same angle. So if 1 is 120, what else is 120? 5? 5 is 120, yes. And 8 is 120. So what's 6 and 7? 60 degrees and 60 degrees. Nice. So, parallel lines. JC, we good with that? They're going at the same angle, so their angles are going to correspond. And write this down. Corresponding angles postulate. Okay, a postulate. That is just uh, like stating the obvious. Write that down. That's what a postulate is. A postulate just points out something that's obvious. It's kind of like a rule, a law. You're going to have to refer to this in your homework a lot. Corresponding angles. Circle these guys. One and five. Those are called corresponding angles. Why are one and five corresponding angles? Why? Okay, write that down. They are in the same location. So one and five are corresponding. What else is corresponding? Tony, give me another pair of corresponding angles. Two and six. I'm going to circle them in different color. Two and six are corresponding. What else is corresponding? Fernando. Money. Four and seven. So corresponding angles, according to this postulate, they are all congruent. They are the same. So, corresponding angles postulate, the angles are congruent. That's what it is. Got it? The angles are congruent. One is the same as five. Are you ready for the next one? So, this is a postulate. That's just stating the obvious. The rest of these are proofs. These are theorems. So a theorem is something that's been proved. Alternate interior angles. Do you remember which ones are alternate interior? Well, okay, the interior is the clue. What ones are on the interior? Interior is anything in the middle. So that's a sandwich. It's this stuff in the middle. So, Devin, give me a pair of interior angles, but alternate interior angles. Which ones are alternate? Okay, four and six are alternate. Got them? Now, what is this theorem going to say about alternate interior angles? How are they related to each other? They're either going to be equal or they're going to add the 180. 4 and 6, do they add the 180 or are they equal? Your alternate interior angle theorem says measure of angle 4 is congruent to the measure of angle 6. They are congruent. They are the same. If 4 is a 40 degree angle, 
and then so is six. Let's do another theorem. Here we go. What about uh, what about this one? Consecutive interior, Andrew. We know interiors. These guys right here, right? It's the middle of the sandwich. What's consecutive? Which two angles are consecutive? Four and five. Good job. Four and five are consecutive. So this theorem is going to tell me what, Cassie? How are four and five related? Are they equal? You got two choices. They're either equal or they add to 180. They add to 180. So the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle five equals 180. Fernando, what do we call that? Two angles to add to 180. What are they called? Money. Supplementary. Supplementary. How do you spell it? Supplementary. Supplementary angles. Gage, do you see another pair of consecutive interior angles? Three and six would also work, yes. Three and six would add and give you 180. 